The Magic Show is brought to you by StarCityGames.com, and check this out. M11 is here, and we've got it all. Boxes, cases, fat packs, intro decks, singles, and foils, all available for order and ready to ship today. Looking for Primeval Titans, Fauna Shaman, and Foil Mana Leaks? You know where to find all of that and more? StarCityGames.com. This is Cedric Phillips. Don't target me with Esper Charm. Welcome to The Magic Show. Best format by far, not even close. If you have decisions to make starting on turn one, uh, everything you do matters. If you make a mistake, it's probably gonna cost you. And while that might suck for a lot of people, I think it's incredibly rewarding. Like, that's what magic should be, and that's what it is. It's awesome. It's really good format as soon as they've been since they've been they could, they could make the format last, um, they could make the, the time limit 30 minutes. And you could get three games in comfortably if there was no Sensei's Divine Top. With Sensei's Divine Top in the format, they need to make it 60 minutes. I'd say it's a healthy format. I think Top being in the format with the fetch lands, I mean, the games are la lasting too long. I might consider banning Top on that grounds, but not on power level. It just serves a lot of functions, keeping all those decks in check that have so much, so much powerful business. There's no metagame in Legacy, really. There's like a, some decks you can play, but like you, I, I prepped against ten different decks, and I played against two of them in seven rounds. Like you don't play against decks; you play against cards. Like you're not playing with bad cards ever, really. Like you, nobody showed up here, and you're just laughing at their cards. Like haha, ha, they'll never do it. Like even show up like Academy Rector. Like people are like, oh, that's still a powerful card. Patrick Sullivan described it pretty well when he said it's the format where you can play any deck you ever liked ever. And it doesn't matter if it's just a brew because almost everybody else is just playing whatever their favorite deck was from whenever ever, you know? Like there's, people play Stone Cold anything in Legacy, you know? And it's all pretty okay, you know? Like the 20th best deck's probably close to as good as the 5th best deck, you know? They're all decent. It seems very diverse, you know, some people love a really, really diverse format. Oh, I don't think it was necessary at all. I even talked to Aaron Forsyth, he didn't really think that it was necessary just yet. It was more like a cautionary thing and he doesn't feel that they necessarily should have done it. Would it eventually have gotten banned? Probably, but I think they did it too soon. They should have given us a little more time to mess with it. Um, it had yet to take over the format, they were just expecting it to, so that's not a really good thing. I don't think it was necessary for them to ban Mystical. I think it was a little bit of a knee-jerk reaction. If the combo, the good combo decks were reanimator ad nauseum instead of like Allure and Show and Tell, but I don't see like that as being a huge difference. Anybody who says that they don't want to play Legacy because Mystical Tutor is banned... First of all, Lindell's Bolt is a card. I agree with the banning because the format was just too fast. There wasn't a, there wasn't a lot of room for gameplay, it was just mostly mulligans, and um, if you drew Force of Will or not. And when they banned it, they made Sensei's Divine Top as powerful as it was before, which was the problem. They didn't, they didn't, I don't know why they didn't retroactively see it coming, but uh, had they banned Sensei's Divine Top as well, I think the bannings would have been perfect. A banning Flash is like arresting Lindsay Lohan. Because you know she's done bad stuff before, so she's probably going to do more bad stuff later. But banning Mystical Tutor is a little different. It's more like uh, like uh, arresting Kesha. Like, she hasn't done anything yet, but you know she's gonna. And Mystical Tutor is all like that. Like, it's not there yet, but it's gonna get Assault and Battery at some point. Basically what happened is the, the new kids that are coming up take things for uh, Epso Facto for fact, and um, they get these deck lists, and they copy them, and they change two or three cards, and they assume that this number's right, this number's right, this number's right, and they've, they've kind of stopped thinking for themselves, which is really bad. So everyone uses Magic Online, uses the eight stock deck lists that win the tournaments, don't try to beat them so much as just tune the good decks, and the formats just become dry really fast. There's a trap you can fall in where it's, you, you get a lot less out of your efforts to try to innovate than you do out of your efforts to try to 
copy other people's bills and put, try to combine two, two known decks. Like these small innovations, they pay greater dividends, but you can't hit that jackpot of making that new deck. I don't fault players for turning to the hive mind. I think that you need to do other things to build your deck building skills. Play cube draft, I think that's a great, and you know, talk to your teammates about how to build your decks. Play other formats, vintage, like legacy, type two. Don't, don't just play type two, because then, then all you're thinking about the same decks, the same known decks. Magic Online's more inbred than Deliverance. Uh, like the startup screen, she just had like the dueling banjos riff. I lost a hive mind over in the, the tournament. Turn two, the guy molds a six, turn two, he's like, turn one, ancient tomb. I'm like, okay. I play like a brainstorm or something, pass. He goes, turn two, lotus petal, thought sees, takes my force of will. I brainstorm response, put Emrakul show and tell on top, takes my force of will. Then he's like, island, show and tell, two cards in, hive mind, one card in, pack the titan, no cards in. I'm like, all right, got me. Seven cards. He had used all seven cards at BB on his mold of six. But uh, besides <laughs> that hive mind, besides that hive mind. I think the hive mind is bold. Magic Online is a different game than the real life. It is a completely different game. You were playing in a Grand Prix, and this is your one tournament. So the metagame is one time. So innovating a deck to win this tournament. You can't do that on Magic Online. You have to keep playing over and over and over again in multiple tournaments. So innovating new deck lists, besides innovating tech, is just out of the realm of possibilities. I can't, I won't waste time innovating a deck. You spend time like researching the format, testing and losing, getting things properly done, and then two days later everyone has that tech because you just took it into a small tournament and you won your 36 packs. Congratulations, you know, you probably wasted more time and money than that 36 packs is worth. So the collective is what Magic Online is because it's a group of small tournaments compared to one big thing. The problem is you can't relate Magic Online to the real life Magic, like Pro Tours, Grand Prix, PTQs. They're a completely different system. If there's a collective, I'm the head of it because I appreciate Magic Online because my technical game got so improved by doing this and grinding it out, figuring out the best cards. And I juggernaut in my way through events. That's how I'm here. I just played so much Magic that I got good at it. I think it's great. I think Magic Online is a great tool to get technically good at this game. Now we're gonna have a little fun. I want to do a little. Uh, I want to do you a little. with a little bit of fun is a dangerous combination. Oh yeah. Me? I want to uh, do a little word association. Word association? Yes. The fact that you're smiling makes this very dangerous ground for sure. Go ahead. <laughs> Tell me the first thing that pops in your mind as I as I say the following terms. All right. Force of will. Chase the mind sculpt. My Belcher's countered. Essential. Boring. Awesome. Awesome. Free him to Turek. Brainstorm. Brainstorm. The first thing that popped into my head was brainstorm, but that can't possibly be right. But yeah, I mean, I have to say it. So. Counterbalance. Top. 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 Annoying. Good. Overrated. Fun. I hate you. Chase the mind sculpt. Goblin lackey. Siege gang. Goblin ring leader. Pile driver. Stupid. Annoying. I'm dead. I'm in trouble. What are you, five? Tarmogoyf. Sucks. Awesome. Meh. Nice card. Broken. Second best two drop. Swords to Plowshares. I guess overrated. Chase the mind sculpt. The first thing that pops into my head, I would like to write a poem about Jace the Mind Sculptor right now. This is just the first thing that popped into my head. Patrick Taylor. Best card ever printed. Awesome. Winning. Insane. My favorite. No, nah, you know what? Jace the Mind Sculptor, first thing that popped into my head. I cannot believe that I'm not playing Jace the Mind Sculptor this tournament. Alluring. Eh. Not good enough. Stupid. Overrated and poopy. Best combo deck. That is the greatest deck that was invented 13 years ago. Aluren is like Terrell Owens. Cause it's like, no, he'll work here. And then he doesn't work here. And then like a year later, he's like, yeah, no, it'll work now. And then no, he won't work here. And then he'll go to Cincinnati and it'll work. And then, no, it won't. Preach from below. The glue of every format in Magic ever because that deck's never gonna die. Trash is awesome. <laughs> One of the worst designed Magic cards ever. Me. Because I was relevant three years ago like Bridge from Below was. Am I wrong about Dredge? Every format has a Dredge deck in it and like we always like, well I couldn't think of something else and I got no testing in. Let's play Dredge. That's what it's always like. It's like the burn deck. Oh nobody God. nobody walks into a tournament like four weeks in advance and is like, let's test Dredge the next four weeks, guys. <laughs> never what happens. <laughs> Hate that deck. Brainstorm. Banned. Banned. That'd shake up the format, huh? Not overpowered. Awesome. Awesomeness. Just about the best card ever that we should just smile and nod and pretend it's okay. Or we can make a cycle of brainstorms for the other colors. Like black instant, target player can't draw cards this turn. Now think about that when they brainstorm. Legacy. 
Awesome. Really fun. Blue decks. <laughs> Sweet. Best format in Magic. Like he's like curling in the Olympics. People care about it for about three weeks every four years, and then never again. And that's legacy.